Hi guys, welcome back to another video from Between the Ropes TV. Again, I'm joined by Yas, my man. How are you doing? I'm good, Ray. How are you doing today? Excellent, man. I'm excellent. We're really looking forward to this fight that we're just going to break down between Jose Cepeda and Regis Progre for uh, the light uh, welterweight at WBC world title. And it's about time that Regis Progre got that shot again, isn't it, Yas? Yeah, 100%. Like, obviously, the last two, three years um, has been quite a bit of a... It's not been exactly been his luckiest of times, obviously, since that uh, Josh Taylor fight in 2019. Um, obviously, uh, lockdown has obviously, you know, um, caused some problems there. Obviously, there's been a bit of a backlog. And obviously, arguably, in my opinion, we lost a good part of two to three years of him of a fighter in their prime years, you know, he's 33 years old. So, you know, mm. when fighters get around that 30 to 31 um, years, um, 31 years old, that's when that they're in like the peak of their power. So to lose At out class as well, exactly in that, in the lower weight classes, obviously the fighters peak earlier due to making weight and all that kind of stuff. So it's not, it's not a good thing to obviously have that happen, but nonetheless, obviously they're fighting for a WBC title, you know, um, and it's an interesting fight. Uh, some I feel like some fans they may look at this fight and think, oh, it's two southpaws. You know, it will make for a bit of a you know boring kind of chess match because they'll just be cancelling each other out effectively. But I think this fight actually has the potential to um, cause um, some fireworks, and I do see it being quite an interesting fight. Reason being is because um, I think progress has been making a bit of noise recently. Do you know how he feels as though he's entitled to a shot and all that kind of stuff? So obviously all that talking, now he's going to want to back it up and, you know, and put in a good performance to get the win. And obviously paid obviously similar to him, 33 years old. So it makes for quite a very even fight. Two southpaws, both 33 years old, both from the USA. And, you know, so obviously Zapeda, I think he comes into this with um, the longer, the, a bit, I think he's got a bit of a longer reach. But effectively, I think that the weight, I feel like it's, it's kind of affecting Zapeda. For me, recently on the scales, he's been looking a little bit frail and it's looking like he's kind of struggling with the weight. So how is that punch resistance going to be when um, uh, Riga's program is landing? landing? Because he, he can finish and he can punch and he, he's really good at um, controlling distance. For someone who is built like how he is, he's quite a short stature kind of guy. Yeah, he's he is, very yeah. good at um, taking away the range of you know guys who are a bit bigger than him. So how is he going to be able to deal with that when he you know breaks that range and starts going to the body, etc.? It's interesting. So I, I'm gone. So talk me through the strengths of Zapeda then. What what is it that Zapeda uh, will need to do to win this fight? Because when you look at Zapeda's record, I mean he still got a decent win against Baranchik. He still got a decent win against Jorge Pedraza. Um, you know, some some time ago. Um, is is it is it the fact that he has got that sharp shooting style from the outside? Will that be effective, or do you see a lot more in his game that he has to cause Regis Progress some problems? Well, Zapeda, he is he's a well-rounded boxer, and he's got a bit of pop in his shot as well. So he has, yeah, yeah, that also, do you know what I mean? So that is the equalizer, and if he can time that range and pop off them, you know, mid to long range kind of shots as um, Progress coming in and trying to do mm. the work on the inside, if he breaks that range, it could pose for problems. You know, being the obviously the the ideal game plan will be for him to use his natural advantages in this fight. But when you're coming up against someone who knows how to negate that, obviously he may be forced to um, maybe stand and trade with him at times just to you know mix it up. But I yeah. feel like that's where he's going to come unstuck, and Progre is going to um, put together some shots. And I feel as though he's probably going to produce a stoppage win in like round nine, round eight or nine. Okay. Well, fair enough. Well, uh, I'm, I'm probably going to go for Regis Progre. I, uh, I, I actually do agree with you. I think he's going to get a stoppage. I think he could come a bit earlier. I think what you, the point you were making earlier is really, really good in terms of, I think his style in terms of being short and stocky. I think he'll just manoeuvre his way to get on the inside. You know, I think he'll catch um, Pedraza with a, sorry, Zapata with a combination that he won't see coming. I think that's what um, Progre is really, really strong at doing. You know, some people, some good pundits had him as being really unlucky against Josh Taylor. I had Josh Taylor winning that. I can see why some people gave it to Progre. Progre gave a really good account of himself. I was really impressed with him against Terry Flanagan. 
Um, it, was, it was a good fight, and Terry Flanagan, funny enough, beat uh, Zapata those years ago, and I think it was in the second round, and he, he looked quality doing it. Um, all of Terry Flanagan, a blast from the past. Remember him, British world champion from a while back. So, yeah, um, looks as though we're both agreeing on that, yes. So, guys, you've heard it from us too. If you agree with us, put your, uh, put your views in the comments. If you disagree with us, we'd love to hear from you and we'd love to hear why. Again, drop that in the comments. Plenty more content to come. We've got a really, really busy week. So, look forward to some live reactions from the boxing coming from Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Take care.